So as you can see, my blue and pink are right here and they stay right there because as I lock my floats, it twists and I untwist it with some stitches afterwards. So here's what we're doing. I even got white out because my stuff is so bright. Okay, so let's see. Oh, it's so hard to do this, you guys. Okay, so under my phone, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, I'm about to do five pink stitches, so I'm going to lock my float here. So I still have my yarn always, you know, where I need it, one on each side or whatever. So <clears throat> now I've got one knitted there. So for me, as I approach stitches, I'm going to bring the blue up. Well, I want to lock my float next to a blue stitch because it kind of masks itself a little more. So I'm gonna knit one more and see there's my three pink and I don't go more than three stitches without locking my float. So here's my float. Now <laughs> I'm left-handed. <laughs> I always end up saying that. So I'm gonna grab my blue and I've already inserted the needle. I'm gonna grab the blue and I'm gonna lay it over that needle. Then I'm going to knit that stitch and watch what happens. Okay. I've locked it in there, but now it's on top. And I'm too OCD to continue with my pink over the top of that. So I bring it back because I want it more flush. So you can see it's locked my, my blue yarn in there. So that's locking the float. So I have two more stitches to do. And then now, because my yarn is twisted right here, I don't like that. Now, like I said, I started with the pink being over the blue. Now I'm going to take the blue, because that's next, and I'm going to go over the top of the pink, and this untwists my locked float. So there's one, two, and then now I'm going to throw that back where it goes, and I'm going to start with my pink again and keep that on top of the blue. Do you see what I'm talking about? So let me make sure I'm not messing up my pattern here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So here's, here's what I mean about, um, I use whatever, I'm doing a bunch of blue right now. So I'm going to put the blue on my finger and then I'm just going to do however many I need in blue, which is two. And then I'm just going to grab the pink and do it like this. I mean, this is literally how I do Fair Isle. So, um, there's probably a million techniques, but I'm all about not having my strands twisted, um, because it slows you down so much. So now I'm back to five more and I'm going to have to lock my float here. So let me do that. And, and as I knit, see, I'm crossing two stitches right there, right? So I talked about the beginning. There's kind of a spring to the fabric when you knit across a few stitches like that. When I do that, I can feel it kind of go like that. And when it bounces back, that's where it should be. So I used to look and see, no, I don't do that anymore. And if you look at the inside of mine, Look at all consistent. So um, I feel that spring. And so for me, I know it needs to be about that far apart. So I give my cinch over here, not over here. I mean, just going to cinch it too tight right there. So I get it right at the end of my needle and have the cinch happen way out here so that I'm allowing for those two stitches that I'm crossing. So now where was I? <laughs> okay. Oh wait, here we go, okay. So two, and then like I said, I like to lock a float in, next to a matching stitch. So because I'm going over a blue stitch right now, it works great to lock it there instead of the next one. So I'm gonna do it on the blue. And there it is. So I'll work one more of these little sections and then I've got other stuff to do. So there's my fifth one. Okay, so now I've twisted it. So I'm gonna grab the blue and go over the pink now. And then now we're back. I don't have anything twisted over here. That's annoying. So back to, where am I at here? <laughs> I have never explained Fair Isle while I'm working on some Fair Isle. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so I'm on a pink. See what I mean? So I have the blue, I'm working the blue mostly. So when I'm ready to do just one pink stitch, I just grab it and knit it and then let go of it again. 
Okay, you guys, <laughs> hold on. Okay, <laughs> I'm back in the saddle again, here we go. So I'm gonna show you this one more diamond section over here where I lock the float and go a little slower because I think I went kind of fast on that one. And as I'm knitting, I'm pulling this a little bit like this. So by the time I wrap that stitch, I've already got, I mean, right here, these pink ones are very, you know, they're individual stitches and they're crossing two stitches. But if you look, they're all the same and see this one I haven't worked yet, but they're all the same distance. That's how you get the consistency. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the five stitches again um, with locking a float. So. Here we go. So once again, I don't go more than two to three stitches without locking a float because that's how you get messy inconsistencies. Okay, so a blue stitch, I'm gonna lock my float right there. So my, you insert the needle, then you grab the color you, you're wanting to carry underneath your working yarn, underneath the working yarn lay it in between your needles, and I always just grab it like that with this finger, and then you carry on and knit the stitch like normal, and then let go, and then now it's over the top of my pink, so like I said last time, I'm gonna grab the blue and pull it back because I don't want that blue in between those pink stitches. So um, I'm gonna do one more, and with that locked float that I just did, it just twisted my two strands. So now I've got my five stitches, I'm ready to go back to blue. So I've been working my pink above my blue, but because they're twisted, I'm gonna grab the blue and I'm gonna go over the pink. And now it's back to not twisted. And then I carry on to the next sections. So now I'm gonna use the blue mostly. So I'll do my two stitches grab the pink, go over the blue with it, knit the one I need. And it really, it goes really fast, I think. And so the cool thing about this though, this pattern, there's only a couple rounds, maybe four out of 16 rounds, do you have to lock your floats on this? So it goes really quick because a lot of them are just two to three stitches apart. So thank you, Marie. I just looked at the screen for the first time. Um, let me do one more for you. I'll lock a float for you one more time. So now I'm going to use pink. So I'm going to wrap that on my finger. So here we go. So I'm going to knit two and because I'm carrying the blue, I want it to be blue wherever I'm going to be locking this float. It helps mask it. So now you take the, the yarn you're not using and it's going to be under your working yarn and you're going to wrap the, the yarn in between your needles there, and then just hold it down with the finger or whatever, and then knit the stitch. And when you get through that, it has, it has locked, see that? It's locked my blue right there. That way, I'm not having this huge blue loop that goes like, you know, five plus stitches, and then there's a chance your stitches get loose right there or a finger catches it or whatever. So, but by locking your float like that, um, it twists your strands. So what I always do is, I mean, I could just take the pink and go over this, but I've done that and I've seen it on the other side and I don't like that. So I move the blue out of the way and then I finish with the color I'm using which I need five stitches. So now that they're twisted, I'm gonna take the blue and go over the pink because this twists them back into place. So now I'm gonna, they're untwisted. So there we go. So now I'm gonna continue with mostly blue. So I'm gonna use my finger with the blue and then I'll grab the pink and just do a stitch. <laughs>
So it's all, it's all pretty consistent. I don't, you know, I don't know how it's supposed to be done or whatever, but my OCD kind of takes over when it comes to techniques. So here's one more, just because I'm on a roll. Okay, so I'm gonna knit two, and then here's where I lock it. So you, you start the stitch, you, you insert your needle, and then you're gonna grab the yarn you're not using and keep it, it will not lock if you bring that up above that. It has to be under your working yarn. So under your working yarn, you just lay it over the needle there. It's in between. See, I just laid it in between my needles. And then I just hold on to it with a finger. And, and then you knit the stitch. And then after you slide it off, it's now over the top of my pink. I don't like that. It shows on the other side. If I were to grab the pink and go over the top of that, no, don't do it. <laughs> so I pull it out of the way. And then as you can see, it's locked it in, in my stitch right there. So it's locked in, and then now um, to untwist this, I'm gonna, oh wait, hold on, let me do my two more stitches. Okay, so there I am, my five pink are there. So I'm gonna lay that down. I'm gonna have my blue go over the pink now to untwist my strands. So I never have my strands twisted by doing it this way. And I just am very, very particular, I like to say. So they're, they're untwisted now. And then I'm just gonna keep going. So anyway, that's that. It's another beanie day, but I'm almost done with my cow. So that's, that's what I got, that's how I do it. I would love for you guys to tell me how you do it if you do it a different way, but um, I know I'll probably never change it because <laughs> this works great. So I just keep them where I want them and, and it's almost done. Look how tall. I'm so excited to wear this, you guys. Can you just, oh my gosh, I gotta go, I gotta go.